Hi, my name is Amy and welcome to my first Photoshop video. Today I'm going to teach you about the clone stamp tool, which is probably the most used tool in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and start by opening up my Photoshop Elements program. I have version 11 installed on my computer. Versions 11 and 12 are very, very similar. So if you have 12, it will look the same. If you have version 10 or older, you can still follow along, but things might be in a slightly different location. You'll notice down here in my dock that the program is already showing up as an icon. You might have to go into your finder and then select applications to find it if you haven't used it before. Once you do open the program from your applications menu, you'll notice if you click down on this little icon, which will be showing once you open it, you'll have options here. Mine shows remove from dock. You will have an option to show it in the dock. So just be aware that that exists so you can make sure it shows up there. Once again, we're in the editor, not the organizer today. So I'm going to open this up. You can see that I am in expert mode. That's because that's where I left off last. If you look down at the bottom right, you see there's this option. I'm looking at my layers. So if you don't see your layers when I get to them in a minute, just make sure you can at any time scroll and click back and forth um, to get to these different view options down here. So just make sure that you're aware that those exist. If you have an older version, you can go to Window, and you'll notice there's a place to check layers. If you don't see your layers panel, that's where you can find it if you have version 10 or older. I'm going to go ahead and open up an image that I want to work with. I'm just going to go to File, Open. Since I'm on a Mac, I organize my photos in iPhoto, or actually technically I organize them in Lightroom, but a lot of you probably use iPhoto. If you have a PC, there's a good chance you use the organizer. You can load pictures directly from your organizer. So if I click Europe trip, these pictures are in my organizer, so I'm able to just look through here and pick, and pick a picture from down there. I'm going to go to File Open though for this example because I know where it is. You'll notice I can pick Photos. It shows my iPhoto section of my computer. It's already on the Arizona Michigan trip, so I'm just going to scroll down to the picture that I want to edit and hit Open. You can see here it shows up. So, this is a picture of my husband and my oldest son, Robert. It was taken a few years ago. But you can see it's a really nice picture of them, but there's all these cars and people in the bottom which I want to get rid of. So I'm going to use the clone stamp to do that. So I'm going to start by selecting the clone stamp, which it's already picked, but there you go. I'm going to click on it again, and you can see down at the bottom you see these options that are included. If you have version 10 or older, your options to change the clone stamp will be up here along the top. Make sure you have clone stamp selected instead of the pattern stamp tool. That's important. You'll also notice if you have your default brushes selected, which by the way, you can drop that down to pick something different, but you'll notice that I selected one of these nice soft edge brushes. That's going to be helpful for you. Before I get started using this tool, I want to make a new layer via copy. You can very simply just hit Command J, Control J for PC people, and you'll see I have two identical copies up in my layers panel of my image. I do that so if I mess up really bad, I can just start over really easy, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to hide this background layer. I just get in the habit of doing that. That'll help you with some of your other edits you do in the future. So. I'm going to go ahead, I'm back at the clone stamp tool, I'm just making sure that's selected and I'm going to start working with it. If you look right now, I'm hovering over the sky, you can see that there's a little teeny tiny circle. That is the size of my brush. I want that to be bigger, so I'm just going to drag this up and you can see if I, whoops, I didn't select it, sorry. You can see if I hold this over here, you can see just the size of that circle. I want it to just be something that's easy to work with for me. So make it a little bigger. I think that's probably a good size. It's kind of a personal preference, but if your circle is too small, it makes it difficult to work with, which you'll see in a minute. To start, I'm just going to hit my Alt or Option key. I'm going to click an area that I want to target, meaning that's the area I want to clone and put somewhere else. So if I click that little section of trees, so I just held the Alt or Option key, and then I clicked with my mouse while holding Alt Option. I'm going to move my mouse up. 
I'm just doing this so you can see what it does. And I can hold down, and do you see how that tool literally just clones that section of the image? Now, obviously, this looks silly. If you had done a bunch of mistakes in a row, remember me talking about having that background layer, I can just go ahead and delete this, say yes, my background layer is now at my original image. I can hit Command Control J again and start over. Like I said, just showing you that so you can see what the clone stamp is actually doing. Now I'm going to target this little area. I'm going to pick this, these kind of shrubs and textures in here to clone this area, to fill in this area down there. So I'm going to go ahead and click my mouse. So I hit Alt or Option, clicked with my mouse. Now I moved my mouse down and I can just hold this down as I cover over the people. So once again, hit Alt or Option, click with your mouse. I lifted up all my fingers, I'm not touching anything. Now I just move my mouse so that I can move that circle. You can see there's that little bit of kind of shrub texture showing up in my mouse circle down there. I'm gonna hold down and you can see those little crosshairs moving. Those crosshairs are just showing you what area is being covered. That can help you because, for example, let's say I get over here and I go, whoops, I didn't mean to start covering that arm. That looks funny. You'll have to keep retargeting. So once again, I'm hitting Alt, Option. I click with the mouse again. I move it down. I hold down with the mouse and keep going. Alt or Option. Hold down with my mouse to cover up this area. A word of caution, if you have an image that has brick or something with a lot of vertical or horizontal lines, this won't work very well, simply because obviously those lines are going to be very difficult to match up. So just be aware that some things might not work as well for the clone stamp. It is a great tool, but it has its limitations. A background like this where there's a lot of just texture and variety works pretty well. Okay. Now I'm getting really close to where his shirt is. I actually want to move off of this soft brush and pick a brush with a nice hard edge or sharp edge now. This is because I don't want to have a soft blurry edge along his shirt. That wouldn't look good. So I'm just trying to just drag this up. That looks like a good size. Alt or Option click. I'm going to pick this section of tree and now I can just move my mouse down move this over to fill in right next to his shirt. There are some other tricks you can do with this, but this is just one little video, so I only have so much time, <laughs> which is why I teach courses in this. So I'm just using this to fill in right along the edge of his shirt, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick that nice soft brush again, just to keep from having that kind of ugly not ugly, but you can end up, it can look funny when you have a sharp edge to your clone stamp. So I'm going to go ahead, fill some more tree in. And now I need to go over to this side. So Alt or Option click, hold down with my mouse. You, once again, you can see where there's crosshairs go. I want to show you something that happens when your crosshairs reach the edge of the image. If you look, do you see how I've got this really sharp edge here? That's because the crosshair was going off of the corner of my screen. So once again, I have to Alt Option click again. You'll notice I retarget quite a bit. You can see my keystroke showing up at the bottom. Every time I hit that Alt or Option, it shows up. And there's also a slight delay with the screen capture systems. You can see it's, it's happening quite frequently. And that is the key. There is some finesse to this, like I said. It just takes some practice of putting this back or picking which textures are fit best in the area. So I'm going to go ahead, cover this section up here. Almost done with my background. Once again, I'm getting close to his shirt. So I'm going to pick a sharper edge brush. Once again, that's just so that when I'm clone stamping, I get a nice sharp edge along that clone stamp. Because along his shirt, I don't want to have a fuzzy edge, because that fuzzy edge is going to make the edge of his shirt look blurry. So I can go ahead and clone stamp. 
do remember if you ever do something you didn't like, like let's say, like by the way, you can really see that sharp edge there. If you want to undo, all you have to do is hit Command or Control Z. By the way, when I say Command or Control, the first word is for Mac people, the second is for PC people. So Command, which is the Mac people, Control, which is the PC people. Once again, Alt or Option, click. Hold down with my mouse because there's that little bit of red showing up there. And I'm going to go ahead and pick my soft brush again because if you do look carefully, you can see some of those hard edges like right in there. You can see if you look really careful, you can see kind of where that you can kind of see where the edge of that clone went. Go ahead and I am done. There is my image. No more cars in the bottom. You can see there's a lot of repetition down there. I could play with that more, but we're going to call it good for now. I can go to File, Save. You'll notice it has the option to save it as a Photoshop file. A Photoshop file is basically just a file that has layers in it, which I, t I can talk about more in a different video. But with these layers, sometimes people like to have those intact so you can go back and make further changes later. For this image, I don't think it matters too much. We can go ahead and save it as a JPEG. You'll notice that it has copy attached to the end of your image. Photoshop does that on purpose so that you don't accidentally save over your original image. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Actually, I'm going to pretend to click save because I don't want to do this because I have it existing on my computer already. Once again, you would click save and then this image would show up right next to your original file so it could be easy to find in the future. Photoshop also, if you're using the organizer, will show that in the organizer for you. There you have it. That's how you use the clone stamp. Like I said, the main tips are just make sure you make a new layer via copy of your background. That'll just help you out if you make a number of mistakes. Make sure you have this regular clone stamp tool selected. Make sure you have a nice soft edge brush and make sure you have a decent size. You can kind of get an idea by me hovering over to see that size that I have on mine. Make sure you have a decent size brush selected or it'll be very difficult to work with. I hope you enjoyed this video and have fun clone stamping. Be sure to check back soon for more tutorials coming up in the future.